Hello folks, people in the YouTube community. I just want to come before you to do another video. For the most part, I think this is the first video that I'm actually doing for the new year. For So I know it's a little late than ever, but happy new year to all of those who actually do choose to listen to my videos. And as always, I do thank you for your support and everything, you know, and listening to what I have to say. And again, you know, I just am grateful again to just be alive. But I actually wanted to come before you you know to do another video again you know and like I say I'm not really <clears throat> I've kind of taken a different approach and I think I'm going to take a different approach this year to actually doing videos and what I mean by that is that even though I will be still doing videos you know I, it won't be like I say about almost every single thing that's going on in society you know sometimes what I like to do is just take a step back and just observe different things and patterns and such and then when I for the most part start you know doing my research and writing things down i want to make sure that i get all that i need to get and for the most part come up you know with something that is very informative for you to do a video <clears throat> and for the most part those type of things does take time you know and for the most part so it's not that i'm actually trying to really put off youtube you know completely it's just that i'm going to still do videos but you know, I just want to make sure that what I put before you is quality content. And because of that, again, you know, the videos are going to still come, but they may not be, you know, on the regular, like some of you all may be used to seeing. You know, I'm going to still be doing my teaching videos and such like that. That will never stop. But like I say, you know, just bear with me, like I say, because again, with life and again, a lot of other things that goes on, you know, we have to kind of, as adults, be able to balance things and put things in its proper perspective and for the most part you know but for the most part you know you can just see here now that i believe that this year has already started off with a bunch of foolishness you know and i was inspired to do this video because again you know i was just going through you know and just kind of looking you know at television and reading social media and such like that and i happened to come across an event <laughs> that really kind of it really got me to thinking and the sad part about it is that i feel that nobody really understands our struggles except for us meaning black folk now like i say you know i know this video may not go over well with some people you know and they may look at it as being a bit you know racist and all this other type of stuff I'm going to just say how I truly feel. And the thing about it, I know deep within myself, I don't have a racist bone in my body, even though we do see things that we may not like. Um, you are for more than like, or f you could feel free to take away from it what you will, but that's still not going to stop me from saying what I feel that needs to be said. But there actually was an award ceremony, I guess, recently where Rush Limbaugh yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure that you all know who this dude is. You know, he's that, I guess they call him conservative talk show, radio show host or whatever. You know, he was given the Rosa Parks Award. And for the most part, I was for, I was very floored because there is just some things that really belongs to us, if you know what I mean. You know, and I'm not trying to sound demeaning or insulting, but... That's just the way that I truly feel. You know, there's just some things that really should not be given out, but should be kept within our community. You know, I will say this, you know, I enjoy being black. Okay, let's just let's just talk about that. You know, I would not want to be any other person, any other race, any other thing, because I enjoy who I am. We are unique people. You know, and we have our own culture. And the, and the thing about it, again, is that this is something that we developed and that we actually created, even though, you know, it's been like, you know, a struggle getting the things that we have to be established within our community. I mean, we are very innovative people. You know, we invented a whole lot of things. Of course, this is Black History Month, so I'm pretty sure a lot of radio or a lot of... um television programming are going to be doing different highlights throughout the month, you know, to just signify for the most part, the accomplishments and, you know, the things that we actually do or that have done that are really noteworthy that maybe society does not know about or that they do not want the folks in society to know about. 
we are very smart people. We are very creative people. We can make things happen. That's what we are as black folk. Okay, but the thing about it again is that, you know, folks know that. And I believe, honestly, that they are threatened by it. You know, I cannot really help or change how someone perceives me, you know, as a race. I look at it is in this way is that it's their hang up, you know. We all are unique. We all have something different and, you know, creative to offer and to bring to the table. But for the most part, when it comes to black folk, there's always an issue. There's always a problem. We are never good enough. You know, we always are this or we are always subject to do that. Statistics says this, you know, and this is what it's going to be. But I'm smart enough to know that I am not a statistic. I am an individual, you know, and again, I make the choices of what I want to do. I set my own path. I pray to God that he that the roadmap and the, the plan that he has before me gets fulfilled as long as I fulfill his will. But again, we're living in society now where all of our accomplishment, accomplishments, sorry, are being overlooked and they're just really given away or really talked about as if it's, it's not a big deal. And the thing about it, again, is that white folk and like I say, I don't have anything against white folks because, again, I have a, I live around them. I go I went to school with them. I even work around them. Like I say, you know, so we're all really one human race. But for the most part, you know, white folks, it's always been a special relationship with the white folks and black folks. And it's always been one of tension. And the reason for that is because as black folks progress, for the most part, white folks look at the reasons why we couldn't, why we shouldn't. And the thing about it, again, is that growing up, you know, I would hear about this all the time, you know, with my mom and dad, you know, they would be like, you know, and I never understood what that all meant because the only thing I knew is that I was, a, you know, black and, you know, and I just saw someone that was just different than me as far as color wise. You know, I never thought anything of it or anything like this. But like I said, you know, my dad, you know, would sit down and talk to us sometimes and just let us know, for the most part, the things that we would be facing in this life. And like I said, I'm pretty sure and it's actually something that needs to be done in various households, really, even now, because, again, the subject of racism is not going to go away. The thing about it is that it may be pushed under the carpet, but the subject matter all in and of itself and the after effects is never going to go away. That is just something that we just have to deal with, unfortunately, as black folk. I'm trying to keep it real, folks. I'm, I do apologize if this is offensive to anybody. But again, like I say, you know, you can take away from it what you will, but I'm going to still say what I need to be, what needs to be said. But yeah, it's important that, you know, parents actually sit down and let, you know, their children know for the most part what these things are. So when they do get out there and they see these things and they experience them, they will know exactly what it is. And not only will they know what it is, they will actually know what to do to combat it. See, my whole method of doing things is actually to, when ignorance is brought my way, I like to meet it with intelligence. And see, one of the main things that people, uh, I should say, and I'm not saying all white folks are this way because I don't know all white folks, but just generally speaking, they white folks really expect ignorance from black folks. And the reason for that is, is clear because that's the only side of them that we are willing to show. And basically, when you show someone something so many times, they don't really know any other side of you than that what you have shown them way too many times. And for the most part, that's, for the, that's really what is being done in this time frame. And I'm like, well, even though people may stereotype me, and I'm not saying that it's right, to be like them, meaning my fellow black folks, I'm going to show them that I don't, that I'm not like that. Even though I don't have to, I'm going to show them that there are some classy black folks out there that really knows how to get things done. Not only do they know how to speak intelligently, they live a good life. They have good neighborhoods. They drive good cars. They have good jobs. Hey, I'm an example of that. 
But the thing about it again is that we should not actually have to go out and prove our accomplishments just so that white folks can accept us. Now, see, I will say this, you know, for the most part, white folks already know that we are very intelligent people. And the thing about it, just like I mentioned once before, they are threatened by it. And the thing about it, again, is that when you're threatened by something, that means that you see something that you that is actually either equal to you or better than you. But the thing about it is that you don't want to actually show it to society that that's the case. So what you will do is you will actually go and belittle the accomplishments and the progression to make the black folks feel ashamed of what they've accomplished. And the thing about it is that it's not right. Or they will mimic it and maybe downplay it to make it seem like it's not a big deal. And see, that's the way I feel right now with this whole thing as far as Rush Limbaugh being awarded this uh, a Rosa Parks Award. Like I say, and, and the thing about it, and again, God bless him, you know, I know he, he pretty much made recent news that he was diagnosed with, I guess, terminal cancer, you know, and, you know, and that's all, that is never a good thing to hear. But I will say this still, there are still some things that need to be kept within the black community. There's just some things that cannot be shared with other people because, again, it's hours and hours alone. One of the main things that I actually liked about Rosa Parks, you know, and the thing about it again is that, you know, I was doing a little research and reading on, you know, with her and, you know, about her, you know, we all know her as a very great civil rights icon. You know, in short, you know, she refused to give up her seat to a white man. You know, they were wanting for her to go sit on the back of the bus. But the thing about it, again, is that and what I love about her and the thing about it is that, again, she is a very influential person, even though, you know, she's passed on. You know, she says and a lot of people actually, again, I guess, misinterpreted the reason why she didn't want to get up from that seat. And the thing about it is that I like how she said that she said that, you know, people's always thought that the reason why she didn't give up her seat is because she was tired. But she said that's not the case. She was just tired of giving in. And the thing about it, again, is that it's got to come a time where we have to stand our ground. We are beautiful people. And guess what? White folks know that, too. But again, this is something that we actually have to know and actually be able to go on and produce and do our own thing. Nobody should have to tell you that. That is something that is actually that we are given to us from the moment that we're born and come into this world with this beautiful melanin that we have on our skin. But see, the thing about it again is that, you know, it's so funny that people want to downgrade our accomplishments. And, and the thing about it is that they already know that this is something great. To stand up to someone who was white in that time frame and earlier eras was almost unheard of. And since it was actually worthy of death because again, of white society, white privilege, all of these other things that we actually know about. But society does not want us to speak about it these days. And the thing about it, I don't care. The thing about it is you cannot ignore the truth. The truth is going to come out either way. And the thing about it, the Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. So basically, we're in a sense, we're still really repeating history. Racism was really out front and blatant, openly blatant, you know, in those time frames. But now, even though it's hidden, it's still there. You may have to kind of peel away the layers a little bit, but you're still going to see it. Because again, it's still there. Hello, how are you? I'm still here. And the thing about it is that as long as you have people that are downgrading and really belittling our accomplishments and taking it as a joke, that is an insult to us. And I'm pretty sure that not only I see it that way, I'm pretty sure you may have a lot of different videos here on YouTube that may talk about this issue with that award being issued to Rush Limbaugh. What folks got to understand here is that it does not matter how close or how trustworthy we see ourselves with white folks. And again, I have a lot of white friends. Like I say, you know, I, I went to school with them and I even still have some of them that I still keep in contact with, you know, because again, we, we form lifelong friendships. But there are some things that you really have to really talk about and really have to come to terms with. And I actually spoke about this in videos maybe about two years ago or something like that. It does not matter how much of our culture is so great. 
We're going to always have folks that are really, that's going to want to imitate us. And see, one thing about it is that <laughs> you may have people that may go around and, and want to make tabloids and want to take pictures and everything with famous black folks and this, that, and the other, you know, hey, I've been over to their house, we're kicking it and all this other type of stuff. But deep down, you better understand and believe something. White folks are very, how can I say, critical of black people. It does not matter how many friends they have. It does not matter where neighborhood they grew up. It, none of that really matters because deep down, they got to really understand that I'm black and I'm white and they're black and I better make sure that I don't say the wrong thing or I have to act a certain way. And the thing about it again is that <laughs> it's crazy to really say that that's the way they think, but I know that I'm not a dummy. It does not matter how good or how much of a buddy you are. Oh, that's my dog and this, that, and the other, which is, I, I hate that term anyway. Makes me sick to my stomach. But that's beside the point. No matter how much they actually classify themselves as tight buddies, you best believe they are a bit still standoffish in some cases. Because again, they don't know what bag we are going to come out of as black folk. You had some people, I've actually seen it myself, where, you know, they're friends with white folks. They figure that they're in a clique and they come up and really use the word nigger and all this other type of stuff. Hey, that's my nigger and stuff like this. And I'm like, and they're a bit hesitant to say it at first. But when they do say it, they actually kind of look a bit uneasy when they say it. Because they're going to look now to see the reaction of all of the other people around them. To see if they're going to come out of a different bag and whoop him and tear him a new behind. But again, us being, you know, the people that we are, in some cases, wanting to be accepted and all this other type of stuff, we will take that quote unquote insult and we'll wear it as a badge of honor and all of this other stupid stuff, you know, and, and I'm like, it does not matter if that word is used as a form of endearment or anything else. It is an insult. And I don't care how tight you may say that we are, there is just some things that you don't say, especially to a black person. And the thing about it again is that, you know, we're living in this, in the society now, of course, where we have to coexist. Thank God, you know, we want to learn. And the thing about it, we learn from each other. But white folks know that black, being black is a great thing. That's the reason why they want to, in some cases, imitate us. They want to imitate our culture. They want to imitate our clothes. They want to Im imitate our language. You know, they want to do all of the mannerism that typical black folks do. You know, it, I mean, it's and I mean, it's it's to the point where okay, we see here that even though behind closed doors you despise us in public, you want to be like us. Why? Because I believe honestly, you think and you know that we got it going on. But like I say, that's just me thinking out loud. You know, I don't want to, you know, kind of rub anybody the wrong way. But like I say, I will still say this is my video. I'm going to say what I want to say, you know, so it is what it is. Get over it. But the issue is, is, you know, following along that theme, you know, again, it's all about wanting to actually, I guess, be a chameleon, if you will, kind of fit in, get in where you fit in. And the thing about it, again, is that you figure that you're OK with black folks simply because you're able to go around and really, I guess, show folks that you can hang with the big celebrities and all this other type of stuff. And I'm pretty sure they already know what this dude's agenda is, meaning President Trump, you know, that, you know, he wants to jump in and out, you know, and it's just it's crazy. But the thing about it, again, with all of this, you know, you figure that by you doing this giving this dude an award that is going to sit well over with black folks. And the thing about it, again, you may have some black folks that may, need, may not see an issue with it. But like I say, I'm not a, the other black folks. I'm me. I'm a unique person. And I have a right to feel the way that I feel. And the thing about it, again, is, you know, even though you're able to hang out with celebrities and you're able to see this and be doing this, that, and the other, that still does not take up for the fact that you are still a clown. It's just an insult that our accomplishments, our goals, our ideals, our dreams, our tomorrows, all of our sorrows, all of these things are actually being overlooked and just thrown away and given out and really replaced with new rhetoric as if, again, our struggles didn't mean anything. We have a right to be outraged. 
We really do. And the thing about it is that I'm not here on a, on a campaign trail. I'm not here to do any of that. That is not my job. I'm just a regular average citizen, veteran of the United States military that has a right to voice his opinion. You know, and the thing about it, again, is that this particular action is just more to come. This is just the beginning, folks. Like I say, you know, there's really no more pure black race because pretty much our culture is being divided and eaten up by so many different subcultures you know that we don't even have our own anything anymore our music is even gone you know so it's like <laughs> white folk can you know can sound just black if you don't understand or close your eyes and listen to the music you'll swear you're listening to tupac or whoever else may be but you'll open your eyes and see oh that's a white dude okay like i say it is what it is i'm just i'm just for the most part you know just Addressing the elephant in the room because we already know what the issue is as far as race relations in this day and time. The black race is dying out through violence, you know, homicides and everything else. And for the most part, we're being replaced. And the sad part about it is that our accomplishments also are being replaced. So we don't so it does, so nothing doesn't mean anything anymore. Our accomplishments is actually being done, but again, white folks are getting credit for it. You know, and the thing about it is that it's a shame that all of these things have to be spoken of only during a certain time of the year, which is February, which is what we call Black History Month. So that means by default, that means that the rest of the year is White History Month. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, you just have to address what you see. I know and I always tell people, look, I am not for everybody. Like I say, I'm a, I consider myself to be a fine wine. You have to take me as with an acquired taste. Some people may like me. Some people may hate me. Hey, you know what? It does not matter. I still have to live and go on and do and be me. But I just wanted to just make this video because I believe that it's very important that our legacy and our accomplishments still must remain. We still have to give honor where honor is due and know that there's just some things that we don't share with any other community. Okay, folks, God bless you. More videos coming.